So my talk is titled, jQuery isn't enough, an introduction to Ember.js. Um, just before we get into that though, I'd like to you know, just cover the standard, who, who am I and why am I speaking? <laughs> um, I'm a software developer from the New York area, I'm freelance, uh, my company is called Code All Day. Um, and I've built a few apps in Ember.js and somehow that made me feel conf confident enough to give a talk on it. So we'll see how it goes. Um, uh, so when I go, went to actually write the talk after writing the presentation, I, I looked at the title and I said, jQuery isn't enough. Enough what? <laughs> I'd already forgotten what I had meant and thought about it not very long. And I, enough abstraction in my opinion. Uh, jQuery was great. It, it, jQuery is great. It extracted away the DOM and a lot of the lower level stuff that you used to have to do on the web in order to get a nice user-friendly uh, user site. Um, but now I prefer to use Ember. I, I use Ember on top of jQuery because it makes it even easier to build user-friendly sites and applications. Um, so what is Ember? Ember says itself that it's a framework for creating ambitious web applications. Um, yes, it's an MV, I think to quote a speaker yesterday, an MV whatever. <laughs> um, it does matter that it's MVC. It's all about separation of concerns. Um, it's great to evaluate a framework based on where their ideas have come from, and MVC has a great history and a lot of research that went into it, and the history of true MVC comes from desktop UI programming. And it's very interesting at least to me. <laughs> um, so I want to cover a little bit of the benefits of a framework. A lot of people at this conference, have, a lot of speakers have covered the benefits of modular code and code organization. Um, I think the benefits of a framework are very similar to the benefits of using open source at all. Um, you can keep team members on a single page. So if you use this framework instead of creating your own homegrown solution, and there's 10,000 homegrown solutions you can create that are great. You can structure JavaScript however you want and have a nice organized thing, but it, it only keep your current team on page and uh, on the same page. Whereas if you use a framework, people are out there learning the framework, and when they come into your company, they may already know it, and they'll be able to get on board really quickly. Um, let's see. <laughs> I have my notes on my phone because <laughs> Uh, so, and presumably there'll be up-to-date documentation that anybody can learn from. Um, and the great thing about a framework is you have a standard to hold all your applications to. So, I, from my experience, when I went to develop different JavaScript different heavy JavaScript client applications at one, one company even, as we made new ones, we progressed over time and we, we changed the way we do, decided to do things. We went from, some, uh, one of the speakers yesterday spoke about went from JavaScript on a page to a lot of plugins to our homegrown MVC and then finally to Ember. Um, but if you use a framework, presumably you'll keep up with the framework and that, that's kind of a leader for you to keep you pointed in the right direction. Uh, dry, don't repeat yourself, but why repeat everybody else either? Um, so you can certainly be dry within one code base, but why not be dry across code bases. Basically, why, why reinvent the wheel? If somebody else is working on this great framework that makes it easy to develop web applications, why, why would you recreate the wheel and lose their efforts? I mean, if you're using somebody else's framework and there's a community around it, the community is contributing why you're working on other things, why you're working on the domain of your application. So you don't have to, you know, I turn around and Ember gets faster every time I look. <laughs> so that's pretty nice. You know, my performance problems vanish. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's see. So I'm, my, my real saying is develop your application, not a framework. And that's what I really feel frameworks free you up to do. You can create your very own application. You worry about your domain. You worry about the user, user experience of your application and not about when to bind events, when to clean up events. All of the, the mechanics of JavaScript development. Uh, better maintainability. So again, the community is working on the framework as you're working on your application. There, uh, we can't think of everything, and 
neither will framework authors, but we benefit from the entire community's input. There, um, there are more smart people not working for you than working for you or working with you. And I personally think, I look at Ember and it's developed by a lot of people that are much smarter than I am. So I'm very happy to be able to use it and create cool things without having to invest the time to necessarily learn how to build something like Ember. Yes, I did just admit, I'm stupid. <laughs> uh, so, demo. So I built this little sample app in Ember and I just wanted to show it to, nope. I just gotta get it up. Show it to indicate, what is this? Um, It's in another window. So this application I built in Ember very quickly, um, just a couple of hours of work. And so it's using local storage. And I just wanted to demo it. So it's a, it's a photo gallery. So I'm uploading a uploading. I did a little hack where you just put a URL and it imports the photos because I didn't want to actually write a back end for this example. So So I hit import photos and it displays all the photos below. I can remove these photos. I'm going to remove this one that's ruining my aspect ratio for the entire grid. <laughs> and then I'm actually going to just create the gallery. And so it brings me back to the listing of galleries. And from there you can go within the gallery and it just shows you all the photos. Within the photo you can go and see a photo. You can edit the description or the byline down here. I'm not very good with CSS, that's why it's pretty pretty janky. Um, maybe that's not the right word. Um, <laughs> and so I, just something that's pretty simple and if you did it as a standard, you know, standard with a back-end framework and just plain HTML, it's pretty simple. But this is completely client-side and some of the cool behavior I get for that is being able to show the, the photos on the page very easily and as I show you examples from the code, you'll see how simple it is comparatively. For example, when I edited that photo, it's all, all this is stored in local storage, so I can say flowers, orchids, and done. And I hit reload, and it's stored. And uh, the editing code is much simpler than you might have with the standard uh, jQuery. So let me try to get back to my presentation. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, it's in Chrome as well, right? Into presentation mode again. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so Ember's standout features to me, I think it has all the benefits of a framework plus useful URLs. So you saw as I reloaded, every, everywhere I went in the application had a URL that I could deep link to somebody else. Um, they're all individually enterable. And that's, that's just very convenient. For example, uh, I particularly love it when testing because I can go straight to where the part of the app I want to actually test and not have to contrive getting there through the application. Uh, it keeps data in sync across the UI, so you saw when I deleted the photo that it was no longer in the gallery. Um, unfortunately, I didn't put in better examples of this. I really meant to put in something like tagging where the, the numbers would update immediately. Um, but you saw when I went back to the gallery that all of the data was there, and when I edited, it, it was saved. Um, and it handles event delegation and view hierarchy for you, um, which means that you never explicitly bind events yourself. Uh, it's handling it for you. I'll show you that further when we get to code examples. Um, by default, it has a bunch of helpers that bind on click, and then you can choose other events. You can say on other, on other events. Um, it cares about performance and it cleans up after you. So I never explicitly have to clean up after myself uh, in terms of views or event handlers or any of that sort of thing. So creating an Ember application is incredibly simple. 
Uh, I named mine PG for photo gallery, and it's just ember.application.create. And if at this point you just created an application template and application handlebars, you could use this, you could use Ember for a static site, and I feel like that gives a lot of power to the client side developer in uh, prototyping and developing applications because no longer do you, do you have to rely on the server side technology just to get easy and quick things like partials or reusable parts of code. Um, I think that's something that I would like to see Ember uh, used for more. It would be very interesting. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> not, that's not it for everything. That's it for creating the application. <laughs> um, so a key feature of Ember is the router. Like I said, URLs are pretty much first class. And so this is the router from this little application I created. It has an index route, and that's just for the root route. It redirects to the galleries index. Galleries index is auto-generated when you have a resource. So galleries index is just the main galleries listing. Within there, we have new, we saw that, and show when I went to an individual gallery. And there's also a path to go to an individual photo. Um, so if you just did Ember application create combined with some routes and had templates, you, if you wanted to just do a static site, you wouldn't have to do anything else. I think that could be very powerful for prototyping. Oops, sorry, down. Uh, route definition. So for some routes, you need to do something other than the default magic that Ember gets you. So by default, Ember, if it has a dynamic segment in the route, so something like gallery underscore ID, it'll automatically use the models that you've defined to find that gallery based on its ID. But if you're doing something else like this index, I need to return all of the galleries so that they, they will be the context for my controller, which we'll see, see in a moment. Um, it seems so complicated, but in the end, the whole application is 100 lines of JavaScript, and a bunch of it is this little pad function I had to write. <laughs> um, so the link to helper is one of the, the biggest conveniences with Ember is it's a handlebars helper that will link to an, a route. And it lets you, for example, right here, you're just linking to the route by, by the name, galleries.index. And I think that's pretty convenient. So templates. So here I, I started putting them in this, this slide, slide deck, but uh, they're a pain in the ass to escape, so I figured I'd switch over to my editor. Here's one example. Um, so you can iterate over attributes on the controller, and you can link to a photo, and then photo is the route, and then you can pass it a context. So I know which photo I want to link to. I don't need to give a dynamic segment. I don't need to interpolate an ID, I just give it the actual context and it goes there rather than going there through a URL. And just to show a couple other handlebars, things, you, bind adder is for when you have to um, bind data within a tag because of the way Ember uses metamorphs around, or ha uses metamorphs around where it binds stuff. Within a tag, it would break the HTML. And so I'm binding the source to thumbnail source. So if I change the thumbnail source of one of these photos, it would immediately update, which is pretty awesome, I think. So let's look at back at my editor. I just want to show a couple of more um, templates. So we saw that gal the galleries template. This is the main galleries template, and this is for the resource galleries. And this outlet here is what gets filled in with either the index or the new or the show, depending on which route we go to. And so if we go and look at index, we've got index here. It's a little tough on this screen, I think. Um, so I linked to the galleries index. That's what I showed just before. And all of your, you know, what you're doing is in the template, you know. Things that matter to the actual behavior app show up in the template, which is very convenient for me. I'm not a designer. I'm very bad at design. I love being able to give the templates to the designer and giving them all the power they actually need to, to provide the behavior and the user experience that they want. Um, so nice little features on being able to say, nope, no galleries yet. Go create one. And it's not a weird edge case because everything is bound. It will be pretty um, reliable and declarative. So link to gallery show. 
So I'm here as I'm being a little hacky and just choosing the first photo from the gallery. And let's see. Let's look at show. Actually, new. New is a good one to look at. So this is that silly form I had before. Um, add gallery. So you just have a form like normal. Got a bunch of inputs as a handlebars helper, and you bind it to values that are on that context. So um, not sure I explained it correctly. Is when you come into that the route that returns a context. So the the part that said at the galleries dot find it was returning all the galleries for the galleries in, index. And so Ember has something called an object controller that will let you, or at that point it was an array controller, let proxies everything to that context from the view. So that, that controller was actually auto-generated in this case, and it just proxies to basically the model. So that was back on the index page. So on here, we're on the new, and I actually, in the new route, so gallery is new controller. Nope. Gallery's new route, for that I was returning a brand new gallery. And so I have a new gallery to do with, with what I want within the new template. And so that's what I'm binding to these. And so as I fill them out, they get, saved, they get put on that model instance. And when I finally do something, here this action create gallery, which is on this application JS again. Um, on the controller, so if I look down here, create gallery, so I save the model and I transition back to the gallery's index. And so when you have actions, you can, you can call them on the view, but by default they're called on the controller. And um, so you keep all of your behavior nicely separated from your actual templates. Let me see. All right. Let me go back to the presentation. All right, so after templates, sorry, down. So controller, so I just started showing some bit of controller. So this is a good example of a controller. This is the controller for the actual view of the photo. And it's got two, two methods defined on it, edit and done editing. And when you click edit, you just set is editing to true. And when you're done editing, you save the model and you set is editing to false. And this is an object controller, so it's proc if, if the property is defined on the, the model, it will proxy it to there. But if not, it's on the controller. And so, oh, nope. and so back again to my editor. <laughs> um, and so if we look at that template for photo, it's got their, it's gallery's title. So this is the equivalent to saying, you know, the current photo dot the gallery dot title, because the default context is the model that you're, the, the controller that you're on, which proxies to the model context that you gave it from the route. And so here we have link to gallery index. Here's the link to the gallery. Those are the breadcrumbs. So. So here's our is editing. And so if it is, is editing is true, we're going to show the inputs. And we're going to show a button to say that I'm done editing. Otherwise, we're just going to show the description and a button to say that I want to edit. And if you, because it's all bound, when I change those properties, the template automatically updates. So I don't actually have to do anything procedurally to make the change to the DOM. And I feel like that's the way it should be. I shouldn't have to worry about the DOM. I shouldn't have to ever call .html, hopefully. Another interesting, so here I also have another is editing here for the byline. And I think it's, you know, it seems weird to have this duplication when you're coming from other, um, other backgrounds, but in the case of the flexibility it gives you, it's really great because, like I said, your designer or your UX person or you can decide that, yes, this needs to move somewhere completely different. So they're not coupled together. Um, 
you can decide it does something completely different when you do it as editing. Um, let's see. Project. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. New. So. So something that is interesting here, so you saw when I deleted a photo before, the first pass, something called item controller. So when you iterate through a collection of, some, of, of models or of anything, you can give it an item controller and then everything within there will, have, will go to that controller rather than to the parent controller and that makes it very convenient to operate on an individual item. And so that's, that's what allows me to have this method delete and not have to pass anything in. It knows that its context is that individual photo. All right. Oh, yeah, there it is. Um, and so the last thing I have are some resources. Uh, I didn't go too in-depth with this. I think Ember Watch is great because it points to a lot of varying resources. Uh, discussed at Ember.js's discourse, and that, I find that very useful to read. And the guides on Ember.js.com are very useful as well. Um, it's pretty quick, actually. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Sorry, I can't hear you. They don't. <laughs> um, apparently, Google executes some JavaScript. Um, you who might know more. Yeah, they, they, I can know what Discourse says as well. So um, some applications put the content in NoScript tags, so it's available for the search engine and provide all routes on the server side as well, so that search engines can actually. Uh, index it and get the correct URLs to, to go to. Um, I know that seems like a lot of work. I know there's also some, some way to use PhantomJS to actually execute the JavaScript and generate static pages that the search engine can execute or, or can look at. Did I get that right? <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Oh. How do I manage my handlebars templates? So I'm usually in a Rails world. Uh, I contrived this example without Rails because Ember gets a lot of rap for being Rails only. And I used something called Ember Tools. And so you can see all my handlebars are in different files. And Ember Tools has something to pre-compile them into this file, templates.js. Um, there are a lot of options for, for compiling them. Uh, we tried Yeoman as well, and that also worked just fine. set up for the model, so I can show you the models I have. I'm using Ember Data with the local storage adapter, which is a third-party plugin, I believe. I think it's third-party. Um, it's out there, and it seems pretty reliable. Let me show you my models. JS. And so to create the models, all I had to do was this. I had to include Ember Data, and then I wrote when I added an attribute, I added the correct type, and the relationships are here as well. And it, when you saw that I imported a gallery, it correctly was saving all of the photos as it, through the relationship to the gallery. Yes? Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> so. uh, I saw some if else conditions about if I'm in the state of editing Ooh. or if I'm adding a new gallery. Yes. Usually, yes, I think okay. so. So if the application gets large, is there any good way in Ember to break it up so that I don't download the create new gallery form and all of its assets and still need yeah. to choose to do that? There's been some experimentation with that lately, I believe. I know that they were doing some things where upon entering the route, they would go fetch the templates that were necessary through Ajax. I think that's, yeah. Sure. Do you believe how loud I am? It's good. Uh,